Hackers don't just send you shady-looking files with names like virus.exe anymore. That would be too easy to spot. Instead, they disguise malicious executables as normal, everyday documents, the kind of thing you'd expect from a brand deal, a job offer, or even a company contract. For example, something as simple as a .scr file can be renamed and dressed up to look like a .pdf. Now here's the scary part. On Windows, .scr isn't just some random extension, it actually functions as an executable program, meaning double-clicking it runs code just like .exe would. But to the untrained eye, say a marketing executive or a YouTuber looking through their inbox, it looks harmless. It looks like just another document. That tiny difference is how entire channels and businesses get hijacked. The trick is that you can't trust the icon or even the name of the file. Hackers know you look for familiar logos and file endings, so they lean on that assumption. Instead, the real truth lies under the hood, in the file's actual structure. A legitimate PDF will always begin with metadata like percent PDF dash and information about the creator. An executable, on the other hand, reveals itself with the MZ header, references to PE format, and sometimes even old-school DOS messages hidden inside. So while the file might look like a clean contract on the outside, inside it screams, I'm an application. That's how you catch the lie. But attackers don't stop there. They've figured out ways to mess with antivirus scanners too. One method is padding the malicious file to make it huge. I'm talking hundreds of megabytes, like a fake PDF bloated to 658 MB instead of the usual 10 or 15. That size increase makes cloud-based scanners like VirusTotal or even Windows Defender's own cloud lookups choke, since many of these tools won't even analyze files that large. But here's the kicker. The actual malicious payload hidden inside is tiny. All that extra book is just garbage data added to slip past defenses. If you trim away the padding, the file shrinks back down, and suddenly, scanners can pick it up again. It's clever, it's nasty, and it's one of those tactics that shows just how much thought goes into these scams. And oversized files aren't the only trick. Another common one is password-protected archives, zips or RARs, shared through cloud platforms like Google Drive. Because they're encrypted, antivirus engines can't peek inside until you unlock them, which means attackers can slip their malware through undetected. This is why security people always say, never open random archives from strangers, even if they look professional. If you absolutely have to, open the file in a hex editor or even a plain text editor first. Just glancing at the raw structure can reveal whether it's really what it claims to be. That little bit of caution could have prevented disasters like the one that hit Linus Tech Tips, where an employee opened what they thought was a normal sponsor file, only for it to take down their entire channel. And don't fool yourself into thinking scam emails are going to be obvious. That used to be true years ago when phishing messages were full of typos, broken grammar, and sketchy designs. But now, with AI tools like ChatGPT, attackers can spin up flawless, professional-looking sponsorship pitches in minutes. No broken English, no silly formatting, just clean business language that looks exactly like the hundred other pitches you've already read. To make things trickier, a lot of real companies outsource their PR, which means legitimate sponsorship emails sometimes come from completely different domains than the brand itself. That means you can't just rely on vibes anymore. The only way to protect yourself is to dig into the files and analyze them. Now, if you're not technical, don't worry. There are still things you can do. You can upload files to VirusTotal, just remember that file size limit I mentioned earlier, or you can rely on a solid antivirus that actually inspects files and processes locally, not just through the cloud. But even then, detection isn't perfect. In one example I looked at, only about 25 out of 70 scanners picked up the Trojan, even after trimming away the junk data. And this wasn't some harmless test program. It was a credential stealer designed to rip passwords and session tokens straight out of your browser and send them back to attackers. With just a few clicks, it could compromise your YouTube logins and hand your entire channel over to scammers. The bigger lesson here is simple. You can't just click without thinking. You can't assume that because an email looks clean or because a file has the right icon, that it's safe. You have to double-check attachments, learn the basics of file structure, and stop trusting appearances. On top of that, you need layered defenses. Real-time antivirus, sandboxing tools, intrusion prevention systems, one tool I really like is CrowdSec. It's open source, it works on both Linux and Windows, and it pulls from a community-driven database of attacker IPs. 
Basically, if someone else across the world detects malicious activity from a certain server, CrowdSec can update in real time and block it on your system too. It even integrates with modules like Windows Firewall Bouncer to auto-block attackers before they can brute force your login or flood you with denial of service attempts. And the best part, it's free. But I get it, not everyone has the time or energy to fire up a hex editor every time they get a sponsor pitch. That's exactly why I built a little tool called FileScope. Here's how it works. You drag any sketchy file into it, and within seconds, it tells you what the file really is under the hood, whether it's packed with junk data to dodge scanners, and it even runs the file through multiple scanners at once so you don't have to waste time manually uploading them. Because honestly, this is the kind of advantage I wish I had when I was starting out. And I've already seen it save people. One of our members caught a scam pitch using FileScope and told me straight up that it saved his entire channel from being hijacked. You can find this tool inside Cyberflow's Academy. But that's honestly just the beginning. See, finding vulnerabilities is only half the battle. The real money comes from knowing how to turn those skills into serious income. And that's exactly what we teach inside. Our members aren't just finding bugs, they're cashing out big. Just last month, one of our guys pulled $12,000 from a single critical he found using advanced techniques we teach in the academy. We're talking about people who invested a less than $30 and made it back 20x over in their first quarter. Because here's what nobody tells you. The technical skills are just the entry fee. The real money comes from knowing which programs pay fast, how to write reports that get maximum payouts, building relationships with security teams, and scaling your workflow so you're not trading time for money anymore. We teach you the business side that everyone else ignores. And since you made it this far, I'm hooking you up with 50% off using code CYBER50. But this expires in 24 hours because I can't keep this price forever. First link in the description.